Thank you, Madam Moderator. It is indeed a pleasure to speak. Um, aside from representing the Asian Pacific Resource and Research Center for Women, we're also speaking on behalf of the Asia Pacific CSO Regional Engagement Mechanism, and we're also a member of the Women's Major Group. Um, before I uh, connect to the house, that the to the house of the agenda, that the that the panelists have touched on, I would just like to first backtrack and touch on a key few issues that's relevant to communicating the post-2015 agenda. I mean, having this round table means that we all agree that information and communications play a big role towards realizing the SDGs and creating ownership among peoples and governments. But for this to happen, we must remember that we need open, transparent information and communication systems and political cultures that establish and realize legal rights to freedom of speech and access to information and that do not punish voices of dissent. And this is not available across the globe. We also need free and functioning media, internet freedom, and a supportive regulatory environment. All of these are crucial for accountability. Secondly, the world has become much smaller, but we also still have to remember the digital divide and that not everyone is wired. There are four billion people in the developing world that remain offline. And to be able for us to communicate our agenda to those most left behind, we must address the issues. Why are they having difficulty getting information? And these are myriad. This could include non-literacy, not speaking the major languages or the official languages. English is just one of the myriad languages. Distances from sources of information, lack of electricity and other infrastructure, lack of capacity to use new technologies. Women and marginalized groups like indigenous, indigenous peoples have unequal access to technology still. People with disabilities face additional barriers. And we haven't touched on that yet. Um, on the other side of the communication coin, we must also overcome hurdles to participate and to making one's voices heard. This includes addressing gender inequality and other social norms and power structures that keep some people quiet. We urge member states who are here to regard open, inclusive, participatory information and media channels as public goods and to invest in this, in this and not give it to the private sector. This will strengthen the role of women as producers and processors of knowledge, including traditional knowledge, and enable greater participation of young people and the powerless in social, economic, and political processes. Particularly for indigenous people is their right to free, prior, and informed consent. Um, information and media campaigns to increase awareness on the post-2015 development agenda are needed, but I would just like to bring the discussion in terms of the examples given by the Millennium Campaign where these communication mechanisms must be really used to listen, to gather feedback on what is being done, to be, for us to have an inclusive and transparent monitoring, review, and accountability mechanism where the HLPF and UN agencies can integrate marginalized voices and views when considering the progress done on the SDGs. Uh, in terms of the how to communicate the agenda, really excellent examples have already been given by all the panelists from His Excellency Francis Lorenzo's use of uh, arts and music, to crowdsourcing, to, you know, the caution against using fear tactics by Gramenas earlier, and of course the importance of these emotional hoops and buy-in. Um, just to add in terms of the examples already given on the use of uh, social media and information technologies, civil society of course have been using social media this includes the Arrows, my own organization's SRHR for All campaign and the What Women We Want campaign by the Women's Major Group on the zero draft of the post-2015 document. Another good example that I would just like to bring to this 
plenary is the celebrate pride tool by facebook i wonder if any of you changed your profile pictures last friday to signify support for marriage equality after the u.s supreme court's decision of course this kinds of uh, action could be criticized as clicktivism something that doesn't really change in the end but for me it gauges you know social acceptance and uh, social change and it's also an opportunity for extending the discourse and highlighting gaps so a lot of articles came out in terms of issues homosexuality for example remains illegal in 79 countries globally even in the US a lot of issues are still di disproportionately affecting queer immigrants and trans lives in terms of health care employment and safety and even in the zero draft um, sexual orientation and gender identities are not included amongst the list of um, of uh, grounds for non-discrimination and it doesn't also consistently mention age gender ethnicity citizenship status hiv and health status amongst others um i would like to echo what carmeno said about messages being simple and clear but not simplistic i really like his examples of the polar bear the child and the fight of plankton we really must build understanding in terms of how all these 17 goals are interconnected and i appreciate it is you know dilemma of communicating these 169 targets and 17 goals but at the same at the same time yeah all of these goals are interconnected the rights to development to food and nutrition to land to oceans to education to health to decent, decent work and living wage and to sexual and reproductive rights are all interconnected and we must find ways for us to be able to communicate this. Only then could we actually achieve sustainable development and development justice. Um, we also must adhere to human rights, gender equality, and ethical principles and standards. For example, are we actually stereotyping uh, women and girls when we communicate? Are we using poverty porn? Do we actually ask permission from the marginalized when we use their photos and images and videos. So I think we must walk what we talked. Uh, and lastly, I would just like to end by emphasizing that in communicating the post-2015 development agenda, the what and the why are as important as the how. If the what and the why do not reflect people's aspirations for development justice, the how simply becomes ways for us to perpetuate injustice and inequality. Thank you.